Joining me now is Jimmy Failure, host of Fox Across America. You know him. Hey, hey. Hey, and I like your suit today. There you Although are. Although it's not sparkly. Uh, <laughs> it rained it in. Jimmy, well, on Friday, Mayor Eric Adams, he signed a law banning discrimination based on height and weight in New York City. Watch this. Mm. As the chair of the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance and a co-founder of the Campaign for Size Freedom, I am so thrilled at the example that New York City is setting today. When you talk about not discriminating against someone because of their body type, it's not fighting against obesity. It's just being fair. Isn't it, like, a health issue? I, I, mean... know, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Okay, like, I took your like, joke. No, no, not at all. I just mean I should probably be on their side because I look like I get paid in mozzarella sticks. <laughs> but to be clear, where you're not a protected class is against illness, okay? You're going to incur higher rates of diabetes and heart disease and everything in between. So this is a weird battle to fight because you're actually putting these people in more harm's way by encouraging obesity, are you not? I mean, we think back to COVID. Do you remember when they were incentivizing the vaccine by giving you a Krispy Kreme donut? Yes. But the number one cause of yes. COVID death was obesity? Yes. It's like, I know these symbolic gestures sound like they mean well, but come on, man, it's, not, it's, it's actually not good. And you can say, all right, we're not going to discriminate in the workplace, and that's fine. But you know where they're still going to discriminate? On, like, the bus or the train. No one's happy to see you coming. No. I don't mean to say, you know what I mean? Nobody wants to hear that. But no one, you never get on the train and go, if only somebody 425 pounds could sit down next to me. That's if always only, my dream. If only someone whose shadow once killed a dog <laughs> could sit next to me on this coach flight, it'd be great. You know what? Well, you get paid in mozzarella sticks, and I get paid in Sean Hannity green room food. They always <laughs> have the food. best. It's good food. Oh, like it's Chick-fil-A the best. Yes, they and do. subs, really good stuff. They feed you good. Yes, they do. Jimmy, the live action Little Mermaid. I went there this weekend. Nash screamed the whole time, so I only saw half of it. It <laughs> debuted in theaters this weekend. Watch this. Mm. One longing to be thinner. That one wants to get the girl. And do I help him? Yes, indeed. I did see that part. That was before my uh, six-month-old son started screaming. <laughs> the New York Times, though, they were not too impressed either. Their review said that the movie reeks of obligation and noble intentions. Joy, fun, mystery, risk, flavor, kink. They're missing. Jimmy, kink. What a weird thing, like, to put it in Little Mermaid terms, they should have left that last paragraph under the sea. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yes. where are you ever going to be engaged in a transaction with a child and confidently say, like, there should have been more kink? Like, you know, you come home at the end of the night and the babysitter's like, we had a nice time. We could have used a little more kink. You would have called the cops. Right. You know, you <laughs> Sean would have swung at the guy, and rightfully so. It's weird that they're so confident talking in these sexualized terms around kids, but they yes. are, for whatever they reason, are. you know? It, it's kind of gross. As, as a little girl who used to, like, sit, like, cross-legged, like, singing The Little Mermaid, um, yeah. I can tell you it didn't need kink. No, like, and I knew it was it wrong, and I wasn't one of those kids that was cute enough to get flirted with. Like, I never had to worry, and no one ever looked at me. But oh, this is Jimmy, still wrong. You're, you're cute, especially when you wear your sparkle. Hey, girl. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. You know I was the White House press secretary under mm. Trump. And I have to say, this never happened from the podium. <laughs> but I have a question for you. What's your, what's your favorite Beyonce song? I know there's too many to list on camera. <laughs> smart question, smart, smart answer, smart answer. Okay, she asked a reporter for their favorite Beyonce song. As the Playboy reporter was shouting over me, along with, like, every other reporter, yeah. I wouldn't have had a chance to get questions in. <laughs> Typically, they were the one asking the questions in a screaming tone. You know what I would have loved so much? If that reporter actually, she's like, what's your favorite Beyonce song? And he just opened a binder and scrolled through it for, like, three minutes and was like, I've got nothing. I refer you to the Department of Justice, which is what she always does. Yes. But isn't it so crazy to you, of all people, I'm so glad we got to do this, to acknowledge what seems to be a little bit of a tone shift between White House press secretary for one administration and another, you know? Yeah. Because you would get, I would, we would watch you and we were laughing because it was like watching like an MMA fight. Because you'd just show up and they'd be like, what's it like working for Hitler? And you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, they're doing Beyonce. They've got a squad. It's crazy. And Jen Psaki is giving them cookies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we got to get to this one. Okay. I know you're well aware of the Los Angeles Dodgers Pride Night fiasco, but some MLB players have started to speak out against the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, those sisters who pole danced around crosses. 
Trevor Williams of the Washington Nationals, he tweeted this to invite and honor a group that makes a blatant and deeply offensive mockery of my religion, undermines the values of respect and inclusivity that should be upheld by any organization. We've got 15 seconds, go. Thank you. Number one, this is not what we meant when we called for a drag bunt by the Dodgers. But number two, like I, I go to baseball games with my son. We never leave going, you know what this was missing? Yeah. If someone could just uh, desecrate the Messiah. Exactly. Come on. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.